Hi, YouTube. I am uh, coming by to make a video. This is this is going to be a series of videos that I'm making to put myself back on track as to why I started this channel. And as a lot of you already know, I am a recovered, not recovering, recovered addict. And my brother, he is also a recovered addict. And we we were before the COVID, we were doing meetings and it was a few people, not a lot of people, but it was a beginning for people to learn how to stop doing drugs. And we would we called it stop meetings. Because regardless of how many uh, clinics you go and rehabs you go to, in the end, you're going to have to stop. So we were teaching people how to stop. It was pretty drastic, but that's the way it has to be. So I'm going to read to you all my, uh, the name of the foundation is My Omeka. And I'm going to read this uh, press release that's on the internet, uh, M-E-N-A-F-N. They do uh, press releases. And this company says about Ameca, A-M-E-C-C-A, stands for a method for evolutionary change through conscious awareness and was conceived and founded by Mary E. Sim. Okay, this is on <clears throat> April the 7th, 2020. Maintaining a good mental health and being in touch with one's true emotions doesn't happen easily. It takes years of practice and requires concentration and dedication. In the hustle and bustle of people's daily lives, often their health suffers and they end up in dark places. Let's see, they end up in dark places, which might seem to be like an impossible situation to come out of. In this regard, it's important to reach out for professional help to overcome everything that comes in anybody's path toward le leading happy and peaceful lives. Embarking on this journey of soul cleansing needs to start within. And with someone who knows the right process and has a tool to deal with them. This is why a Mecca becomes the perfect platform to overcome and start being aware of the fears. False evidence appearing real. Addiction, anger, jealousy, lack of confidence, depression, and suicide. This, this, um, uh, it's a pretty long, uh, uh, review, but it's talking about my uh, foundation, Ameca, and you can go to it, myameca.com, but it's about stopping. A lot of people, you know, you can be in addiction so long, and you can think that it's no way out, but this program, we tell you that whatever comes, you have got to stop and you are having a battle. And in my situation, when I was, I was serious about quitting, overcoming addiction, uh, there were times when I would go buy a pipe and go buy crack. I'd look at it, I'd take it and wrap it in a towel and take a hammer and just crap, bash it up. And I know, I knew good and well the next day I was going to do the same thing. But this is how bad I wanted to stop. Even though I went and got the uh, the drugs from my dealer, I paid my 50 or $75, whatever it was, and bought new paraphernalia, brought it home. Now that's stupid. That's really stupid to bring it home and do the same thing. Take the hammer and break it up. And this went on. For, I guess, about three weeks. But that's how serious I was. And this is a battle within. And when you're trying to save your life, 
by any means necessary, you would do this because nobody can come and take the drugs out of your hand and smash it for you. You have to do this yourself. So that's what a Mecca is about. And I am going to talk to, well, I don't, I don't know. It, the people The people that are in the group, they are not ready to discuss, you know, their life right now. Because I remember when I was like six months clean, I was in the AA meeting and 30 days, you know, you would get a chip and you had your sponsor and they would kind of encourage you when you felt low. But when I get my chip, it's like a reward. And I'd end up going and getting, having my dealer bring me some more dope every time I got a chip. So it was a reward and that, that just didn't work for me. But when I got serious about this thing, I had to split my personality. Let me see if I can explain this. The personality, let's see, you have the lower conscious, the lower mind, the conscious mind, and the super super conscious mind. Well, the lower man, the lower mind is the one that wanted to do drugs. And the conscious mind was saying no. So that was a battle, battle between them. And the super conscious is there watching and watching over the, the lower conscious and the middle conscious. But the battle went on and on. Sometimes I would lose and I'd fall. But after being clean for three years, it was three years, that that did not leave. The uh, desire did not leave. I still I still haven't smoked any dope. Something on my lip. Hadn't smoked any dope or anything. Three years. Now you know that's good. But I knew not to reward myself. So, I was still afraid. Three years, three years, I'm still scared I'm going back to the dope. So, at nighttime, that's when it was the worst time, nighttime. I had to take NyQuil. I mean, I'd go to bed, like, after I get off work at the shop, I'd go to bed at 9 o'clock, take NyQuil, so I'd sleep through the night. So I wouldn't get urges. I changed my phone number, tore up all the, your contacts for the dope. That's what you have to do. You got to get rid of that and get away from it. But even after this went on for six years, six years, I'm still afraid of relapse. It's like God, when will this ever end? How come? Well, you know, it was that was because I saw so many people going to that AA meeting. I, 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 I don't. I don't know, AA may work for some people, but when you go there, you watch so many people fail. And watching people fail, that'll put doubt doubt in your own mind. And you'll say, well, I'm going to fail too. Because my my first sponsor, she died of an overdose. So I would say, dog. So you have to sponsor yourself. And you have to fight with yourself because this is a fight. You have got to fight with yourself. And I mean, I did it. I did that. I remember one time I was getting off from work and I was going to, I had my little money. I had had called my dealer and I said, well, I'm going to come by. And she had everything ready for me when I got off from work. But when I got to a red light, I saw a woman. She had two kids with her and she had a baby. She was holding a baby and a son, and the baby's pamper was just all just nasty. And this voice says, well, you give her that money because you know what you fit to do with it. You give it to her. I said, God, this is what I'm And I pulled the car, uh, pulled over in a safe spot and walked over there and gave this woman the money that I had for drugs. And that's, that's how serious this thing is. If you have to, you know, you got your little money for dope, take that money, give it to a homeless person. You don't even care if that's going to be their dope. Because when I got back in the car, I said, well, you know, she ain't going to do nothing. Probably go smoke dope with that money you gave her. But I knew what I was going to do. So that's 
by any means necessary. I, I give that money away. And then after I do that, I would be mad at myself. And I said, well, damn, I don't need to have them th those thoughts in my mind because this higher conscious is going to tell me what to do. So I, I, I said, rather than give the money away, I need to pay a bill with it or something. So I stopped thinking like that. They're trying to take the dope thinking out of my mind. So I said, because if I think about it, this uh, conscious mind is going to tell me to give it away. And I'm trying to surrender. It's just an unconditional surrender that you have to have. There's no terms. You, you, you out. You, 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 there's no reasoning. You are surrendering unconditional. You are out. You give up. You don't even talk. You don't even think about the dope. But it's a, it's a thing you have to do. And this went on, okay, that's three years. Okay, here comes six years. I'm clean. Still hadn't, hadn't smoked no dope. But still afraid. That is just, oh man, I was just, I mean, I made sure I had my NyQuil to put me to sleep at night. But I got so tired of being afraid of night. And I, 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 one day, because I have this thing with the voice in my head, I say, God, when am I going to stop being afraid of relapse? It's been six years. And the voice says, you're going to have to write your way out of this. And I said, oh, right. Mm -mm, I can't do that. And I'm thinking, you know, writing with a pencil. I knew what the voice meant. But you know how you have, look at my finger, you have this here not from writing so much because I used to write for the uh, school newspaper uh, when I was a senior in high school and we would write on our hands, oh, this, this spot still, you know, swells up and it's callous. So I tell the voice, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to write, I'm going to write, but I got to have a computer. If I had a computer, I would write. You know, I've told y'all this story before. But, hmm, and the boys didn't argue with me. And because I knew I wasn't going to buy no computer. So I just have to still be afraid of relapse. But Lord have mercy. The next week, a customer comes to the shop. He's admiring his sofa, how beautiful it is. It was a surprise for his wife. Named Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy, he came in the office and I'm writing him a receipt out. He said, Mary, don't write that receipt. I'm saying, hmm. In my mind, I say, well, well he know he owes me money. Man owed me $400 on the sofa. Uh, he said, I said, huh? He said, yeah, don't write the receipt. I'm going to give you a computer, a printer, and lessons because you need one. Oh, my mouth, my mouth, it opened, and the words were in my throat and on my tongue, and I wasn't, I, I, I it was going to be no, that's what I was formulating in my mind and in my mouth, and before I could get the words right, I remembered what the boy, what I told the boy, if I had a computer, I would write, and I just shook my head. I say, yes, Mr. Murphy, that's a good idea. Please help me learn how to do it on a computer. So Mr. Murphy brought the computer the next day and set it up. He was teaching me how to use it. And I'm, I'm pecking one finger. And he was, you know, I, it was fun. I learned. And I got pretty good with it. And my son said, well, Mama, since you're kind of coming up uh, learning, I'm going to buy you another computer. So he bought me a, a bigger computer for the shop, and he taught me how to use QuickBooks and all your files and everything. It was fun. But I took the computer that Mr. Murphy gave me, I took it home. And I, I knew what I had to do. I was going to have to write. And I said, God, I'm going to have to figure this out. How, where do I start? I asked, asked the voice, where, did I, where do I start? You tell me to write? But what do I say? And the voice just kind of whispered and says, talk about the beginning when you were a child. And man, I started typing with my little two little fingers and this and that. And, 
and then I would, you know, at the, uh, I'm still going to the AA meetings too, but not as much. But they tell you not to drink at the AA meetings, but at that time I was in love with Etta James. Oh man, I put on her CD and drank me some Zinfandel and I could write. I, I mean, before I knew it, I had this thing, just just writing, and I was crying and writing. But I still didn't know how this writing was going to heal me. I couldn't figure it out. But I did, do know that instead of me taking the NyQuil to go to sleep, I was eager to come in there and write some more about my life. And writing in chronological order, it slowed my thinking down. And when I got to the part about us living in the projects, my mind was there and I, I, it, crack wasn't even on my mind. The fear wasn't there. As I wrote these words, I am there in that place, in the project, having a good time when I'm a kid. So, I, I mean, it was just beautiful. That, that, that helped me. So that, that part is what got me through that phase, but I'm still, my waking hours, I'm still afraid, but I knew the battle was on. I, that was going to be a fight, but I'm coming up on 16 minutes, but I, I'm, the, oh, excuse me, the main thing I want to, that's why I'm telling this story, I'm trying to put myself back on track as to why I started this channel. And the book that I wrote, because I was writing, you know, my diary and, you know, had a password on it. Nobody's not supposed to find this diary. But the diary is what saved my life. It got me out of that. And the, it, it turned into a book, Going Home Another Way. And I suggest to anybody that's going through an addiction, because that writing showed me that I was addicted to more than just drugs. I was addicted to going, breaking up with my husband, my ex-husband. We would break up and go back together, break up and go back together. It was just an addiction. I just didn't think I, would, I could live without him. So, so many addictions I had. And, you know, once you start pulling things out the closet and you looking for things that look alike, you can, you can have an eyeball for it. I say, I'm addicted to that too. I'm addicted. Oh man, I have a, got a, a lot of stuff I, I got to throw away. So that helped me. But we're going we're gonna to get through this. And I don't know what I'm going to call this video. But I do want you all to go to my website and look at the... Uh, on that page, it's about, it says, just stop. That's that's the page that talks about me having to uh, break up the bottles, the, the crack pipe and stuff, whatever it was. That was you, you've got to fight. This is a battle. So read that part, just stop. And we do have offer Reiki classes, and I'm a hypnotherapist. And a Reiki master. So it's so many things I could I can do and I just I just want to help people. And by helping people, it helps me. We we help each other. And I can remember the first time I won in a contest when I first wrote the book and they in Dallas, I don't know if they have it anymore, but they had a writer's group and they wanted everybody it was mostly African Americans, but you got a, you had a chance to talk about your first book, and they selected my book for me to come on stage and at the Majestic Theater. And man, it was a packed house. And when I'm standing on stage, I'm looking at all these people, and you know, I kept my eyes open, but. I, I end up speaking to them and telling them, telling them about my story. But, you know, they only allow you uh, seven minutes to talk. So I had to, you know, get to the point. But these people gave me a standing ovation about this. And 
there were some people in the audience from a church group, and they invited me to speak at their pastor's anniversary. And I spoke at this fancy hotel downtown. And they told me that they were using the book in their Sunday school classes. I couldn't figure that out. And I asked them, what, what part of it? They told me, and I forgot, you know, I couldn't figure out the church part, but they told me that they were amazed at my bringing, upbringing in the church. And they used that as an example in their Sunday school lesson. So I said, ooh. So the book, Going Home Another Way, it talks about a whole lot of other things. Just like I was talking about how I was addicted to going back and forth with my husband, I was addicted to leaving leaving church. They call you a backslider. I leave the church. Then I go back. You know, something something kind of trial come in my life, and you say, oh, there's God punishing me. I got to go back to church. Lord, forgive me. Saints, I want y'all to forgive me. So I was back and forth doing that and battling the drug addiction and then running back and forth to church, running back and forth with my husband. It was just a whole lot of stuff. But writing that, I was able to find out a lot about me. So in in this, uh, when you join a Mecca, my Mecca, you will get instructions on how to write. You know, the first paragraph. And this is your diary. And some some people already have their diaries and we you can you can use that diary. But for a lot of people, memory is the thing. You you have got to go back to the beginning, step by step. But this is what this channel we pull in the channel back on track now. You know, we had a lot of, you know, what you call it, turbulence and I'm, I'm much better, and we're going to use the pen because the pen is mightier than the sword. Okay? I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.